What's up everybody? I am not sure what's true or false in this video. This is a gossip video just like on a gossip blog website. So I take rumor and tea and gossip from online, from magazines, from books, from wherever I can find it and I ball it up and I tell you guys a story. Now let's get to the video. Honey that Helix mattress so doggone comfortable and luckily they have a sister company named All Form. These folks sell sofas and chairs that you can mix and match and personalize with over 500 different combinations. And let me show y'all which one I got. Tell me it ain't cute. I chose the four seat sofa with the chase and this particular sofa comes in seven different color fabrics. It also comes in two different color leather. You can choose your leg colors. I myself chose walnut and when they shipped my sofa to me, it was so easy to put together, honey. Look how nice this sofa is. And the most important thing is that it's comfortable, y'all, just like that bed. Cause see, I spend a lot of time on my sofa doing my research. I eat there, heck, sometimes even I sleep there. And yes, I'm comfortable doing all of that because it's scratch and stain resistant. But what makes it even better than all that is the fact they ship it to your door and you can put it together in under 15 minutes. Go online, customize the sofa or chair you want and have it shipped to you for free. You get a hundred day trial and if you don't like it, send it back for a refund. Y'all already know your girl got you too so go ahead and click the link below and get 20% off of a sofa of your choice. Hold it right there, you jive mother sucker. Well, well, well. Boss of Brown. There's no need. We got you surrounded. And you pick your hands up. Freeze, sucker! <laughs> Next time you decide to deal drugs in my hood, just know Fox is coming for you. And I'm a whole lot of money. What it do, Scandalites and Says So Squad? This is Ashley with Ashley Says So, and I am back with another old Hollywood Scandals video, and y'all already know the sister in this video was kicking butt and taking names, honey, Miss Pamela Greer. Let's get to it. And I must say that this story is full of sexual assault. So again, if you guys are disturbed in any way, Go ahead and exit the video. Pamela Suzette Greer was born on May the 26th, 1949 in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Her mother's name was Gwendolyn, a homemaker and a nurse, and her father's name was Clarence, and he worked as a mechanic as well as a technical sergeant in the U.S. Air Force. Now, on top of Pamela herself, her parents actually had two more children, a sister as well as a brother. Now, honey, Pam's life was enthralled in a little bit of drama like right at her birth, and that is when she, her parents, and another couple Couple were riding along in a car and that car crashed and flipped several times. The whole time it was flipping, Pam was cuddled in her mother's arms and luckily they all walked away from the crash unscathed. And then as she was growing up, she and her family lived on a military base in a very small apartment and she had to face the daily trials of racism. But per word on the streets, it was easy for Pam not to feel all of that oppression because of her parents, especially her mother. She was said to have handled the racism and the oppression with a bunch of grace and it was just really the way she carried herself and then fortunately the racism got lighter for them anyway because her father ended up being stationed in Swindon southwest England and of course at that time over in England there weren't many black people over there so those people were just kind of excited to see a black person they didn't have time to be treating black people bad and it was over here that Pam learned certain values and started to kind of be a part of the crowd but unfortunately her father was sent back to the US so this experience did not last long at all. Her gossip when the family moved back to the U.S. they were located in Denver and while Pam was here she spent a lot of time at her grandmother's house as well as an auntie's house and this caused her to grow up alongside many of her cousins. She attended East High School in Denver and it was here that her love for the stage grew. She starred in many stage productions and as her beauty bloomed she started to participate in many beauty contests where she was trying to raise money for college. And then there was this one big beauty pageant that basically represented all of the countries of the world and in that pageant Pam participated as Miss India even though she was not from India. None of this mattered though because the girl was very smart and she was very learned. So she read all of these books and when they asked her the questions about India, she was able to answer them perfectly as if she was born and raised there for all of her life. 
did so well that she ended up winning the swimsuit division as well as the evening gown division but unfortunately she did not win the overall crown or the overall pageant didn't matter though pam had caught the eyes of who she needed to catch the eyes of honey and those were some talent agents from hollywood they came up to pam told her they loved her and they wanted to see her in hollywood and at first pam was unsure about it but her mother pushed her to go ahead and chase her dreams and so she went to hollywood would, but things did not take off as soon as she got there and she actually started working as a switchboard operator even as a switchboard operator though pam's beauty and her presence was just too much to be missed and per gossip jack hill discovered her and placed her in her first real movie it was called the big doll house and the year was 1971 and this was quickly followed by another movie the big bird cage and this came out in 1972 and although pam was not necessarily the star in these movies her her own screen presence let everybody know that she was definitely destined to be a star. She just really had the big bad mama jamma thing down pat. It was also noticed that there was just something about her that when she walked onto the screen that just made the other women like appear washed out and almost basic. White women, Chinese women, black women, whoever Pam Greer stood beside was completely washed out. That's just is what it is. Soon it was painfully obvious that Pam Greer was ready to star in a movie that was all about her. And that movie was called Coffee, which came out in 1973. People were introduced to the baddest one chick hit squad that ever hit your town. She burst onto the scene with that fro honey with them long boots and she sit up there and shoot somebody in the middle of their head. She was doing stuff that was completely unheard of. You know, a black woman calling evil white folks crackers and honkies and you know what I'm saying? Kicking down all the drug dealers. And she was even performing her own stunts. I'm talking about getting bust upside the head with all kind of chairs and jumping off buildings. And then what really made her a star is that she was doing all of this that I just explained with a face that looked like an angel and a body that was ready to send a few men to hell, baby. So as soon as coffee hit the theaters, honey, it turned Pam Greer into a bona fide star. And by the time her second big blockbuster came out, Foxy Brown, oh child, songs was being made about her. Women, especially black women, were being seen in one or two ways. They either had the Afro Foxy Brown going on, or they had the long silky wigs Foxy Brown going on. Either way, it was Foxy Brown, and Foxy Brown was Pam Greer, and so now we have gotten to where Pam Greer has stepped into her success, and baby, y'all know what time it is. It's time to get to some tea and scandal on Miss Pam Greer. Let's get to it. So this first rumor comes from Pam's childhood. Now, baby, why come they said that Pam's grandma, a woman by the name of Marky, was a hot mess child? Said that she was one of those manipulative grannies that would get people to kind of do her dirty work for her. Or like act sick or act incapable of doing something because she wanted somebody else to do it for her. So listen to this one story. Supposedly, at one point, Granny Marky was not supposed to be drinking. I guess she had a problem. Well, little Pam, who was only about five or six years Years old used to come over to their house every day. Said one day the granny was like, uh, Pam, now come on in here now, come talk to granny. Take this little money I'm giving you, go down to the store and buy granny a couple of brewskis and you bring them straight back to me. And Pam, this is our little secret, don't you tell nobody. So Pam, feeling like she had some type of inside secret or secret relationship with her grandmother, would go to the store every single day to buy these beers for her grandmother. Well, one day the granddaddy just so happened to be talking to Pam when he got off work and kind of asking her what she did that day and she let it slip that she bought her grandma Marky some beer. Gossip claims granddaddy went clean off honey bust granny all upside the head and everything child well while you do feel sorry for granny getting bust upside the head and everything you kind of pause on that when gossip goes further to say that granny marky would have easily relegated that beating to pam baby the folks said granny marky was in there telling her husband that pam was a little liar that she was a bad child and the next time that she and Pam were alone, baby, she twisted Pam's arm all up behind her back and basically told her she was a bad girl. Baby, the folks said Grandma Marky would go into Pam's little school books and remove her school homework. She would hide things that the little girl needed. Just doing crazy stuff. Ma'am, Pam ain't bad. You got caught in the lie. 
Then listen at this, another house that Pam used to spend a lot of time at was her aunt's house, and this lady's name was Menon. Well, Aunt Menon was an absolute beautiful goddess, and she was wild and tail was on fire, honey. She basically was one of those party aunts. She was always looking for the next drink and always looking for the next man, and they were never too far away because, like I said, she was gorgeous. Well, because she had this type of behavior, she had many children without a father around. And these children were cousins to Pam, so Pam used to spend a lot of time at their home. And there was this one day when Pam was around six years old once again, and she was at her Aunt Menon's house, but Aunt Menon, as well as any other adult, were gone. So Pam's male cousins had invited their friends over, and these friends were a lot older than Pam. So per the rumor, Pam is just sitting in a room playing with her toys when all of a sudden a boy who was pretty much a teenager comes to the door and tells her, hey, Pammy, I got a surprise for you. She jumps up and she runs to follow him up the stairs, and when she gets there, he leads her to an open bedroom. There are two other teen boys in the room waiting for her. And it is claimed that these boys told her if she laid on the bed, she would get her surprise. And of course, the surprise turned out to be sexual assault. The folks say at least two of these boys actually succeeded in assaulting Pam. And then when the third boy was about to try, a white man came in tussling folks around, honey. Get up from there. Y'all get off of her. So this, of course, startled everybody because where did this white man come from? Well, come to find out, Aunt Menon was said to have made an appointment for somebody to fix some wires in her house or maybe a telephone connection, I'm not sure, but that guy was the repairman. The folks say that he saved Pam from further assault and then after that, he took his little white tail and got up out of there because, hello, a young black girl was being assaulted. He, as a white man that none of these people knew, were in the house, so it's claimed that he got scared that he was gonna be blamed. So, child, that white man cut out of here. Now, after after this assault, it is said that Pam Greer really shut down. You know, she was no longer lively and she became very quiet and very shy. And then when she did start speaking again, all they heard was, Mama, Mama, I need some water because Pam had developed a stutter because of the assault. Now, because of the sexual abuse and the stuttering, it is said that things were really kind of horrible for Pam at this time. There was one more thing that was making her life a living hell. It was because Pam was really coming into her beauty. And yes, she was still a child, but she was a very attractive child. And I'm not talking about two adult males or teenage guys or anything like that. I'm just saying for little boys her age, she was attractive to them as well. Baby, let me tell you, there was this real ugly boy y'all and y'all know this is not my words I don't even call people ugly like that I'm just telling you from what the word on the streets claims that was this really really ugly stinking kind of slow boy with a big lumpy head that was in a classroom with Pam when she was in elementary school but his slowness ain't stopped nothing honey he was mannish and he was attracted to Pam Greer and at this point in time Pam was said to be once again around six seven years old well anyways this young boy became fixated on Pam like he would stop by her desk every day giving her pencils erasers little pieces of candy he continuously tried to talk to Pam and she continuously ignored him and then baby the folks say that one day the boy just came and stood in front of the class and was like Pam 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 and Pam is like uh, but what Pam really should have been doing was looking up because baby she was just like this when that metal chair came across her head baby child the folks say that little boy knocked Pam out honey after this episode it's claimed that Pam's parents talked to the teachers as well as this boy's parents but things just did not change well then one day baby Pam was walking home from school and the boy just came out of nowhere and was just standing in front of her and then as Pam starts making a face kind of like this child that boy bopped her on top of the head like Donkey Kong, pushed her down on the ground, and then took his big fat stinking booty and started bouncing his booty on her head. And then after that, he got up and then he laid on top of her and started bouncing up and down once again assaulting Pam Greer. Now, this little boy didn't have a mind to take off his pants or anything like that, but still, he knew what the motion was and he knew what he was trying to do, so this equated to sexual assault. Now, let's get into some different type rumors about her beauty pageants, especially the first beauty pageant. So, Pam has entered the pageant and now it's her turn to go on stage. She has on her swimsuit and she's just walking the runway, honey. And I imagine while she was walking, somebody in the audience was looking like, 
Dang, why her TT so big? And I say this because Pam Crazy Tail had her swimsuit on backwards, child. You know, the wide booty part that was in the front. But while the women was probably sitting up there giggling about her big old TT, the men was probably sitting up there ready for her to turn around, honey, because they knew it was gonna be minimum coverage on her behind. And of course, I'm joking about this. I mean, she really did have her swimsuit on backwards, but in reality, it seems like maybe nobody even noticed because Pam ended up winning the pageant. Oh, honey, those other girls didn't stand a chance. They were practically invisible next to Pam. And they were actually invisible because Pam was the only contestant. That's why she won. Now, unfortunately, this next rumor delves back into some more trauma. And this rumor is surrounding Pam Greer and some NFL guy. Now, the people claim that in Pam Greer's book, she wrote about this incident and she said this guy's name was Brian, but she could have been changing the name. But anyway, the Gossip on the Street describes this guy as dark skinned, said he was really, really huge and said he had like a megawatt smile. And when he encountered Pam, he flashed all of these nice features that he had and he asked her on a date. She does end up accepting this date and so they go to some hotel or some house party or something like that. In one of these rooms there was a bed and on this bed there had a lot of coats on it. Y'all know how y'all go to a family get together or a little party kickback and everybody is throwing their coats on the bed? Well when Pam went inside of this room to throw her coat on the bed, somebody thought she was a coat and threw her on the bed. And when Pam turned around like, you know, what's going on? She noticed that it was Brian. This big huge NFL player who had acted like the perfect gentleman just before this climbed on top of her and forced himself on her and then let's get into this next rumor and luckily thank goodness the guy involved in this next rumor did not sexually assault Pam Greer but honey do not get it twisted because baby he is full of mess y'all know who it is Bobby Womack and his messy behind forehead. Pam had just arrived in Hollywood and Bobby Womack was working on his Across the 110th Street album. He needed some backup singers and this NFL player named Rosie Greer put him in contact with Pam Greer. And so Bobby Womack hired Pam Greer without even hearing her sing. Now per the word on the streets, Pam Greer likes to act like this was all it was with Bobby Womack but child, the folks said that that ain't all that was going on and said that Bobby Womack definitely got with Pam Greer. Now this next relationship was very serious for Pam Greer and this is when she met Ferdinand Lewis Alcindor Jr. the college basketball player on his way to the pro. And the night that they met it is said that Pam was very attracted to Ferdinand because he was a great dancer. He was long and silly looking but baby he could really shake him down. And then she found out that he was really kind and then a short while after that she found out that that thing hanged low honey and Pam Greer was very fulfilled so much so that she could not get enough of Ferdinand and soon they started seeing each other regularly and they looked to be on a clear road of getting married that is until Ferdinand made a call to Pam one day and asked her to start calling him Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He had just converted to Islam and he was a Muslim. Pam Greer felt like, okay, you know what I'm saying? I can support a man with a different religion. It ain't got nothing to do with me. But honey, soon this started to become a very real issue in their relationship. Kareem started trying to convert Pam day and night. Started preaching to her about a woman covering her head. Talking about she needed to walk behind him in public. One story about her being in his apartment and then he came home with a bunch of his friends and so Pam walks in you know hey everybody and she says hey to Kareem and she leans in to kiss him and he backs up like uh, uh. You know, like her breath was stinking or something. And basically told her that, hey, I can't kiss you. I can't talk to you. As a matter of fact, you need to get out of here while I talk to my friend. And then Pam left and walked to the bedroom. And she just sat back there while Kareem and his homeboys talked. But then this is the thing to get me, honey. Why he's sitting up there talking, all of a sudden he got the nerve, child to walk into the bedroom and ask Pam to fix him and his friends some sandwich. And Pam did it. She went in there, she got sandwiches and said she got some sweet tea, lemonade or something, honey, and brought out a tray and she sat down and she was sitting with them ready to eat her sandwich. Baby, Kareem stopped her in her tracks and told her, uh, no ma'am, you take your sandwich and you go to the other room. You're not allowed to sit in here and eat with us. And then also around this time, he started begging for her to become his wife. And Kareem was said to have given her a book on how Muslim women behave. So Pam is reading, she sees stuff about the head covering, she sees stuff about walking behind him. And then she was like, uh, uh-uh, I know they lying. And what she saw is that Kareem 
could take up other wives. And she's like, you know, Kareem, I just really feel like I cannot get down with this. This thing is saying that it is okay for after we get married, you can have like other wives. Said Kareem told her, you don't have to worry about me taking other wives. I only want you. So Pam tried to believe this guy, but she would not give him an answer as far as marrying him. Then one day while Pam was celebrating her birthday, Kareem called her on the phone and said this. Hey Pam, I hope you're having a happy birthday, but I'm gonna need for you to tell me, yes, you're gonna marry me or I'm gonna marry another woman by 2.30 today. Uh, excuse me? You're gonna have another wife by 2.30 today. Yes, I am, Pam. If you don't marry me, I'm gonna have to marry another woman. There has been another woman prepared for me. But hold on though, Kareem. You just told me not too long ago that you weren't even considering another wife. So how all of a sudden there was another woman prepared for you and you about to marry this woman at 2.30? That means that this whole time you have been talking to this other woman when you clearly told me that, you know, you didn't even want a second wife. What you mean, sir? Well, I I just need an answer. Is you gonna marry me or not? Boy, get off my phone If I bust your head to the white me. Whew, I don't know if Pam responded like that, but baby, I would have. But I do know that she did tell him, no, I'm not marrying you. So Kareem, true to his word, did indeed end up marrying this other woman that same day at 2.30. And if you're wondering if Pam Greer made the correct decision, most people would say yes, honey. Cha, it said that when he and that woman got married, they didn't even live together but about one year before Kareem moved out of the house and kept doing his own thing. But he was still being with his wife and getting her pregnant. Pregnant, although she was living alone and taking care of the kids. Then after all this, a side chick named Cheryl came and told Kareem that you need to leave. I'm your new woman now. And it is left just like that. So yes, if you ask me, Pam Greer definitely dodged a bullet by not marrying Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Now child, listen at this. The folks say Pam Greer show do got a lot to say about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but child, they claim that when it come to another basketball player, honey, she is hush mouth, baby. And that basketball player is Wilt Chamberlain. And really, the reason that she may be so hush mouth is because it's claimed that there was no dating at all. It is just said that Wilt Chamberlain took Pam Greer home one night, made her one of the many thousand women that he slept with, and that was that. And then listen to this next rumor, y'all. Listen to this next rumor. So, um, word on the street is that Pam Greer had like this special relationship with horses when she was young. Even some folks would have went on to say that she was a horse whisperer. In one of her movie sets, she had to ride a horse and child of folks say, Pam come walking through there you know guys move out of the way I've been dealing with horses since I was a little bitty girl she got on the horse and started rubbing its neck and doing all these kind of poses somebody walked by and hit that horse on the booty baby that horse dragging Pam all up and down this sit child drug Pam for filth wasn't no horse whisperer no more her tail was the horse hollower child said that she was on there ah, somebody stop it ah, everybody move out of the way baby said that horse stopped suddenly and threw Pam all across that ground child this next rumor is about another man and this guy's name was Freddie Prince and yes this is the father of the actor Freddie Prince Jr. Freddie Prince was one of the loves of Pam Greer's life. They looked good together, they melted together, he was funny, he was charming but there was one problem. Freddie Prince had a problem with drugs, cocaine in particular. Let me tell you what Freddie started doing. So one night he and Pam are getting frisky and then he gets his stuff together and he goes in. Well Pam is laying and they're like, ooh, wait a minute. You know, this is too good. What's going on? And so she sits up and she's like, Freddie, stop. You know, and he stops and he backs out and Pam looks down and she sees why it's oh so good because Freddie don't have on no protection. And he kind of laughs it off like, you know, oh yeah, baby, I'm so sorry. Dang, you know, I was so hot. I was ready to get up in there. And so he gets the protection and they continue what they were doing. Well, this behavior happened the next night, the night after that, and the night after that. And soon Pam Greer figured that, hold on, like this ain't no mistake no more. And so eventually she talks to Freddie about it and he does admit that he's trying to get her pregnant because he feels like she may leave him because you know she might find somebody else. Well baby, let me tell you something. That's the doggone worst thing he could have said because when Pam heard this, pew, sister girl was gone out of the dough, hun. But not before Freddie Prince introduced her to her next lover. And when Freddie Prince pulled up with Pamela Greer to this next big love's house, this next big love straight out called Pam Greer a bish. Now can you guess who this next big love is? Richard Pryor. And since Pam Greer was called a B, as soon as she pulled up, honey, she was ripped 
to go. Now about a year after this, rumor claims that Richard Pryor and Pam Greer met up again and this time I believe it was on the set of a movie and this time Richard Pryor was not trying to be cocky and funny or anything like that so he and Pam started to have a serious talk and it said that they found out they had a lot of things in common and so they started dating. And yes, Richard Pryor is already in the throes of his addiction. He is already a cokehead bad. But Pam, trying to be the super save a dude that she is, felt like, you know, she could help Richard get off of his cocaine. And she did. For the next six months, she made Richard exercise. You know, she had him out there playing tennis. She cooked him healthy meals. Then one day, she wakes up in the morning and she kisses her man goodbye and she goes off to see her gynecologist. She walks into the office, gets poked and prodded, and then she's told to put back on her clothes and Pam is getting ready to leave. But before she does, the doctor sticks his head around the corner and says, uh, Miss Greer, can I see you in my office for a minute? So Pam is immediately frozen, like, you know, oh my gosh, do I have a disease? Baby, let me find out I got syphilis. Somebody getting killed. But when she goes into the office, she is surprised to hear that it has nothing to do with an STD. Her problem is that she has a cocaine buildup inside of her vagina around her cervix. And the doctor is just a fussing, baby. He is just going off. He's just basically like, you know, y'all new Hollywood folks, y'all just doing too much. You know, you're doing drugs, you got this cocaine build up. And Pam is like, I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs. And so the doctor is like, well, who is the man you're dating? You know, does he do drugs? And Pam is like, well, yeah, but I've never seen him stick his mm -mm in no doggone cocaine. And the doctor is like, who are you dating, ma'am? And Pam is like, Richard Pryor. And then they both stop. And the doctor is like, oh my gosh, we have a huge problem. It has nothing to do with Richard Pryor sticking his uh-uh in no pot of cocaine. It has everything to do with him doing cocaine. And now it's coming out of his... Mm. Baby, that ass on Pam's chest flew away so doggone fast. She wasn't no doggone superhero, no doggone superwoman. She hadn't saved Richard Pryor from nothing. Richard Pryor sat up there and was lying the whole time, child. Steady doing cocaine that whole time, so much so that the cocaine was inside of him. And once again, like I said, coming out of him into her and making a buildup around her cervix. And the doctor was like, hey, straight up. I don't know what kind of freaky, deaky, nasty mess y'all got going on in the bedroom. But honey, let me tell you something. You better start wearing some doggone protection or you, my dear, are gonna have a bad life up the road. And then as they talked even more, Pam let it slip that whenever she goes down to orally do things to Richard, her mouth gets numb and her jaw kind of locks up. And the doctor confirmed, yes, that's the cocaine, ma'am. And so Pam's home, honey, she is mad, honey. She's walking in there, Richard! Richard, I need to talk to you right now. And Richard is like, easy, baby, what's up? And she explains everything to him, and then she tells him, hey, in order for us to keep this going, you are going to have to start wearing protection. And while she's talking, I imagine Richard is sitting up there like, looking around, honey. And Pam is probably like, what is you doing? And Richard was like, I'm trying to see who you're talking to, because who wearing protection? Not me. And so word on the streets is that Pam Greer claimed that once she noticed that Richard Pryor was not worried about her health and he didn't love her, that, you know, after a few weeks, she ended up leaving. But child, the folks say that's a lie, 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 baby. The folks say that she stayed right there by Richard Pryor's side. And the only reason that she and Richard broke up is because Richard married another woman while he was still dating her behind and had Pam Greer out here looking like a doggone fool. <laughs> Child, just messy, honey. So like I said, Pam supposedly talked about the issue, but um, it's claimed that she put it in her own words. You know what I'm saying? Acting like she left Richard. But see, it's a lot of things that people have said that Pam Greer have said or admitted to where she kind of just tells her own truth or she kind of says stuff to make her look better. And as a matter of fact, this thing about Richard Pryor, baby, don't you know they said that Richard Pryor's daughter, uh, Rain Pryor, went off on Pam Greer? Said that she told Pam Greer that basically you had no right to tell about my daddy's sex life. You know what I'm saying? You talking about my daddy when he's not here no more. But, uh, Rain, Rain, come on down. Come on down because I understand where you're coming from and that is your father. But in my opinion, uh, that's Pam Greer's life too, ma'am. You know what I'm saying? Your daddy was laid up in there with Pam Greer. So if she has a right to talk about her life and what happened to her sexually, a build up in her doggone TT, that just is what it is. It ain't her fault that your daddy was the one that built it up in there. <sighs> But let's move on. Let's go ahead and get into this next tea gossip rumor that basically some people on the streets do claim that Pam Greer say a lot of things to make herself look better and also that Pam Greer is a little bit underhanded, honey. 
Now, I'm going to explain that more in just a minute, but it is said that she's kind of underhanded, she makes herself look good, and she's also very judgmental, or at least she was. Said that she was very judgmental to the guys that she dated. Holier than thou. That's what I'm saying. You know, I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? And then her boyfriends are out here living wild. And also holier than thou to other women, other actresses. You know, there were some actresses out there that laid on their back to do what they had to do to get what they got to get. And they said that Pam would be, oh, you did that? Mm, I can't believe you done that. I would never. And so because of this, it's claimed that there was a divide. You had some of these people feeling like Pam Greer was very sweet, very special. And then some of these people that Pam Greer just thought her stuff didn't stay. Then you have the story about Sammy Davis, Altavis Davis, and Pam Greer that some people claim proved that Pam Greer was kind of underhanded. Now, I've already touched on the main meat of this story in my Sammy Davis Jr. video. If you have not seen it yet, go watch it. But I will touch on it here just to basically say that Sammy Davis Jr. and Altavis Davis through a party at their home. Pam Greer was invited to this party, but when she got there, um, per the rumor, Sammy Davis Jr. was basically trying to hit on her. And he was doing this right in front of Altavisa's face as well as everybody else. Pam Greer went around that party asking different people. Liza Minnelli uh, was one of the people. I forgot the other person's name, but supposedly she asked plenty of guests. Hey, what's going on with Sammy? You know, is this the way he behaves and stuff? Why is he trying to do this with me? And it is claimed that a lot of those guests told her straight out, yes, this is what Sammy does. He and Altavis, they kind of got that kind of relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like an open relationship. So word on the streets claimed that when Pam Greer did what she did next, this kind of made people kind of look at her sideways a little bit because what she did, um, even after she got her answer from these other people, she still made her way to Altavis and let me tell you what she said. And this will not be verbatim. This is just to sum it up because I don't know verbatim. Altavis, Altavis, oh my God. I'm so glad to see you. See, Sammy is making me feel really uncomfortable. I mean, he has been hitting on me the whole night, like trying to chase me and get me to go upstairs. You know, I just can't deal with this, so I'm gonna have to leave. And then supposedly Altavis was like, you know, oh no, don't worry, you know what I'm saying? Sammy does this with everybody, like that's just the way he is. And said that Pam looked back at her and was like, well, you know what? I think it's very disrespectful that he would like flirt with me and touch on me and stuff in front of you. Very disrespectful that he would like really want me while you're just standing there. So because I don't want him disrespecting you by like trying to flirt with me and stuff in front of you, I'm just gonna leave. And it's just like some people felt like this was underhanded because the thing of it is is that you were already told that this is the way that Sammy Davis Jr. was and this is the way their relationship was. Also, another thing is that if you felt that uncomfortable, ma'am, you probably just could have left without coming to his wife and basically telling her, you know, clearly, ma'am, your husband wants me. You know what I'm saying? Your husband is flirting with me in front of you. And yes, I'm saying that it's disrespectful, but also I'm telling you this. Why? You know what I'm saying? So people just kind of thought that that was a little bit underhanded and that she was kind of just like um, lifting herself on a pedestal but kind of wrapping it up as care and concern for Alta V. But tell me what y'all feel about that in the comments. Tell me, do you guys truly feel like that she was being underhanded or do you think that she was really looking out for Alta V's? Or do you feel like if she was looking out for Alta V's, she just could have said, you know, Alta V's great party, but I'm going to leave, you know. And I don't know if you've been seeing Sammy, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know how she could have put it. Just basically tell me what y'all think. Now, to get back to Pam Greer's career, although she was reigning in the 70s and she was Queen B, by the mid-80s, early 90s, her reign had really kind of come to a standstill. She was still appearing in movies, but really not that much. And she certainly was not the star of any movie. And I also also think it was in the early 90s that she started doing stage plays and baby listen to this it's a rumor about that too child child let's claim that uh, on one of them doggone plays Pam walked up to a co-star and pulled a gun on him and as soon as he did the co-star said wow Pam said ah and fell down on the ground and even bounced a couple of times. But I think the co-star had made a mistake. Like, I think the co-star did apologize, but it just stood out to me because, baby, the rumor said that Pam was uh, bouncing and falling and stuff. Now, outside of these plays, I don't think Pam Greer was doing much else, but then in 1997, her career got a big shot in the arm, and that is when Quentin Tarantino begged her to be his Jackie Brown. And the movie was a huge vehicle for her, and she did so wonderful that she was 
even nominated for a Best Actress Golden Globe. Unfortunately, she was beat out by Helen Hunt. After this, I do think she had some other movie offers, but listen now, this is back to what I said that Pam Grier thinking she's up here. Because maybe the word on the street says that Pam Grier could have had a lot more roles than she have had, but said that Pam Grier ain't finna star in no movie that's like a black cast. You know what I'm saying? Like a movie like a Tyler Perry movie or a movie like This Christmas or, you know, like a black folks movie. It's claimed that Pam Grier will not star in those. Now, of course, when people hear this, the first thing they do is say, somebody is uppity or you know what I'm saying somebody think they better than somebody but sometimes you gotta give people a little bit of grace what if that woman just has never seen a um script that she likes you know what I'm saying what if she just don't like the scripts and it's not something that she wants to do it's probably not her being uppity but unfortunately when people hear that it's possible that all these black roles have been offered to you and that you turned almost every single one of them down unfortunately people do feel like you know who she think she especially when they see other big known black actresses in these movies angela bassett cicely tyson um Ruby D, has she been in it? I don't know if Ruby D was in anything. Regarding Pam's dating life, I did hear she dated Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin, but that was supposedly before Richard Pryor. After Richard Pryor, it seems like she kind of got with a more regular man. I do know that it's claimed that she was dating a man named Philip in the 1980s, right when she found out that she had cervical cancer and that cancer was said to be terminal. As soon as he found out she had cancer, he started treating her like the cancer was an STD. So it's claimed that they really just grew apart, but Pam Greer ended up beating the cancer. And then in 1988, she was engaged to a man named Kevin Evans, who was supposedly a RCA Records executive. But that engagement fizzled out after only a year. She dated a German canoeist named Peter Hempel, and that relationship lasted a long time, from the year 2000 to 2008. And I am not sure exactly what happened to end that relationship. Now in 2001, and I almost forgot about this, Pam Greer did start in a movie and this movie was called Bones. It was a horror movie with Snoop Dogg playing the title role. Pam Greer played Snoop Dogg's love interest in this movie and baby don't y'all know it's claimed that Snoop Dogg made sure that there was a part written in where he would kiss Pam Greer. He had a boyhood crush on her and he was not gonna let that movie go by without kissing his crush. Oh and then listen to this little tea drop at the end honey. I had no idea that it's claimed that Pam Greer dated Don Cornelius. Did y'all know that? Baby said that Pam Greer was giving it to doggone Don Cornelius. And this was supposedly even before she got with Richard Pryor. Baby, but finally we are all out of tea on Mrs. Pam Greer. At this time, Pam Greer is living on a farm and she sleeps in the barn with animals. And all right, I was being a little messy right there. Let me stop being messy. It is said that she is now living on a farm, but the only time she sleeps in the barn with the animals are when they're sick. So I'm, I'm done being messy. One thing I do hope to see though is Pam Greer back on the big screen at least once. I really want her to grace us with her beautiful, iconic, and foxy mama presence. I can't wait for it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Pam Greer's Old Hollywood Scandalous Tale. Love you guys so much. I'll be back with a new video soon. Bye.